In this problem, we're going to try to find the acceleration of these three masses over here. And the way we do that is, first of all, let us consider the force that is acting on each one of these masses. So for this first one, you can see that there is a downwards gravity, and there is also a tension. So immediately, we can set up an equation. So I'm going to let uh, downwards be positive. So if I have a positive force, that means it's pulling downwards. And then I'm going to say that this mass has an acceleration of A1, this has an acceleration of A2, and this has an acceleration of A3. So our task is pretty much to find A1, A2, and A3. So the first week equation we can set is that you can see that uh, for this left foot mass over here, we have a downward force of mg. And then we also have this upward pointing tension, so minus t. So the minus sign is because this is pointing upwards. And then this is equal to ma, so m, m times a1. And we can do the same thing for this second mass over here. So first of all, you can see that there's a 2mg force that's pulling it downwards. And then here, uh, instead of this, instead of co uh, considering this uh, point mass uh, by itself, I'm going to consider this whole thing as one big object. So you have this wheel connected to this mass of 2m, and this wheel is massless. So I'm just going to consider this whole thing as one object. So this whole object is going to have a mass of 2m, which is going to create this 2mg force that's pulling downwards. And then you can see that the two strings at the side, they're going to contri tr uh, contribute two tensions that's going to point uh, upwards, that's going to pull this whole thing upwards. So we're going to minus 2t, and then this is going to be the acceleration of the mass of 2m. So it's also the mass, uh, the acceleration of this whole system over here. So that's equal to 2m a2. And then for the third equation, we do, we do the exact same thing. So for 3m, we have 3mg pulling downwards, and then minus t, the tension pulling upwards, and this is equal to 3m a3. So you can see that uh, our goal here is to find a1, a2, and a3. So we have three equations, but we have four unknowns. So we have four unknowns because we don't know what tension is. So in order to create our fourth equation, we're going to have to establish a relationship between a1, a2, and a3. So that is pretty much the key to all these Atwood machine problems. You need to eventually establish a relationship between a1, a2, and a3. So let's try to do that. So we're going to have to get rid of all this. So I'm going to have you consider this scenario over here. So let's just say this wheel has gone up to this point over here. And let's just say uh, I'm going to consider this region as one system. We're going to consider this region as another system. And then consider this region as another system. And then let's just say when this wheel goes up, this region over here is, uh, is going to lose a bit of string. So you can see that originally the total amount of string that is inside this region, so I'm going to use a different color, is going to be this much. But then after this wheel has gone up, there's going to be less string included inside. So the remaining string is going to be this much. So you can see that the amount of string that has been lost is equal to this, uh, these two uh, lengths, uh, lengths over here. So let's just call this uh, missing uh, length uh, over here from this middle region. So let's just call this uh, green length over here uh, be x2. So this green length over here is equal to x2. And then you can see that in this middle region over here, we've lost two of these green uh, lengths over here. So there is a 2x2 uh, lost of length uh, from this middle region. And uh, in order to make things work out in the end, I'm going to treat this as kind of like a displacement. So if I'm losing string in this middle region over here, this x2 is going to be a negative sign. So let's just say this green length is maybe probably like something like uh, one centimeter. And in this case, since this wheel has gone up, you can see that within this middle region, there, uh, there is going to be uh, two centimeters less of string included within this red box over here. And in this case, x2, uh, 2x2 is going to be equal to a negative two centimeters. So we're going to stick with this convention. And so you can see that when this happens, when this amount of string is missing, it has to go somewhere, right? So it could be, uh, so this amount of string could have gone somewhere like over here. So if this string is missing, then it could go to these two places over here. So it doesn't have to uh, go evenly to both places. So it could be the case that in the end, after this has moved up, 
the whole system looks something like this. So it might be the case that this leftmost mass has been pulled all the way up, and then this has also been pulled all the way up, and then this is dragging everything all the way down. So the string doesn't have to really go anywhere, but I know that the total amount of string that is, uh, that is going to be increased or decreased from this region over here and this region over here, so let's just call the amount of string that is going to be uh, included or uh, excluded from this region be equal to x1 and this is equal to x3. So if x1 is positive, I'm going to uh, denote that as being equal to this region receiving more string. So if x1 is positive, that means this, there's going to be more string here, so this is going to go down. And if x1 is negative, that means this region is losing string, so this thing would have been pulled up, so there will be less string inside. But using this convention, you can see that because we know that the total amount of string is going to be conserved, we know that x1 plus 2, x2 plus x3 must be equal to 0. So you can kind of view x1, x2, and x3 as the change in string. And then if there is going to be string missing here, there's also going to be change uh, in these two regions. And then we know that if we add them up, it has to be equal to 0 because there is a fixed uh, length of string included within the system. And then you can see that uh, using the convention that we've established over here, so let's just say I have an x2, and then if I differentiate x2, if I take the second derivative of both sides, this is actually going to be equal to the acceleration. So you can think about it like this. So let's just say x3 is positive and it's growing larger. So if x3 is positive and it's growing larger, that means this is growing larger. So that means this region here is receiving more string. So if x3 is growing larger, that means this side is receiving more string. So that means it's going down. So x3 is, is going to be kind of like the displacement of 3m. And so if I take the second derivative of x3, this is going to be the acceleration, and which is incidentally also equal to a3, which we have defined over here. So if we take the, if we use this uh, relationship over here, this is due to the conservation of string. This is because there's a fixed amount of string inside the system. If we take the derivative of both sides, we're going to get 2a2 plus a1 plus a3 is equal to 0. And there you have it. This is our fourth equation. So this is very important. So now we have four equations and four unknowns. So now we can try to work out what a1, a2, and a3 should be.